Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome, welcome to another video with me. I hope you're all well and I hope you like this little card that I've created just for you. It features the wild hair set, that's the small set, you get three in the set and I just featured these two who are facing each other. I thought it might lend itself to Valentine's Day but if not a really cute little thinking of you card. So we've got the Tree of Courage on this side with the dangly bits in that set. And on this side, I've put the Wild Vine stamp. Then I'm using the Millie Foliage set. Here, I've just used one of the stamps from that set. I think, yeah, four in that set. Then I've got two stencils. I've got white orbs here and feather leaf. And the feather leaf one just creates a bit of texture at the bottom and the white orbs in the sky. We've got a bit of white paint for the splatters. That just sort of adds, I think, a bit of a magical feel. I've textured the edge with some water splatters as well. So the colours that I'm going to be using here. I'm using Versafine Claire's. I've got Nocturne for the silhouette stamping. Then I've got Medieval Blue for this Wild Vine stamp. And then I'm using Purple Delight for the little flowers at the bottom. And then for my background, I started with Blueprint Sketch. Then I layered some Villainous Potion on top of it. Seedless Preserve and Black Soot around the edge. And for the bottom, I started with Mustard Seed spiced marmalade and rusty hinge for a bit of depth in the little space that the wild hairs are sitting. So that's our colours. In terms of our brushes, I'm using some blending sponges, which I love. I'm using some gorgeous, soft stencil brushes. And then I've got a couple of paint brushes. That's for the wash at the background for the water splatters and then a fine paintbrush to give me this extra white paint texture. So there we go. We will get started. It's 11 centimetres square as my card base. That is just over four and a quarter inches if you work in inches. And then I just mounted it on a piece of white card giving it quite a generous border here. So, if you're ready, we'll begin. So we're going to start with our card base and I'm going to start with the two colours for the top part of the card. Blueprint Sketch, squish a bit onto my mat and Villainous Potion and squish a bit onto my mat as well. Then I'm going to take my spritzy bottle, get this wet and then with, this is a number one brush, it's a lovely soft wash brush. And I'm just going to put some colour down at the bottom. And you might say, well, why are we actually using the blue? Could we not just go in with the purple? And I think the answer is yes. But you'll see by adding the purple on top of the blue, you get a bit of extra depth that you wouldn't get if you just went in with the one colour. Now, when I'm working, I like to have two pots of water on my table, one for the dark wash and one for the lighter colours. So I'm just going to clean this off and then we're going to go in and do the bottom, the base. And for that, we're going to start with mustard seed and spiced marmalade. Again, wet that and then I'm going to start with my mustard seed and just create a wash at the bottom of my card and then a tiny bit of the spiced marmalade. I don't want this to be too dark because I am going to go over with the stencil. So you just want a bit of extra depth there. What have I got on that? 
<laughs> there we go. So I'm going to dry that off and I'm going to come back to you. So the first thing that we're going to do is now put some stenciling on our background colours. I'm going to start with the feather leaf at the bottom. And I love this stencil because some of the flourishes go this way and their swirls go that way. So I'm going to make sure that I've got a flourish coming here and then one sweeping upwards there. That's it. Lovely. And then I'm going to take mustard seed. Okay, what have I done? No, I'm not. I'm going to take spiced marmalade. I've got the lids mixed up on those two. <laughs> and my stencil brush. So I dab it into my ink pad and then take a tiny bit off because I don't want it to be too dark. I don't want it to overpower my design. These stencil brushes are fabulous. They're lovely and soft. They make blending so much easier. And you can just, by holding it on one side, you can just peek out underneath there. Lovely. You just want that bit of interest. And then my orbs in the background, I'm going to, on this stencil, if you haven't seen it, you get two sizes. So you've got the larger orbs and the smaller orbs. I mean, you don't only have two sizes because there's all different sizes within them, but it's certainly two distinct sections, the larger orbs and the smaller ones. I'm going to go with the smaller ones here. I am going to change my stencil brush. So for this whole project, I'm using three. I have for all of my colours, I think I've got six or seven in total. That does me through the whole colour palette. And what I do in between them, I've got a cloth on my lap and I just brush it off between the uses. But I do have distinct brushes because my favourite colours, blues and purples, if you didn't know already. I'm going to go back to Villainous Potion. Now I just want a hint in the background here. Really you don't want to overpower the sky too much. But you do want it to be visible. Voila! Make sure you put the right lid on the right <laughs> ink pad. Okay, so now we're going to do a bit of our stamping. We're going to start with our Tree of Courage and Nocturne. And I'm going to ink this up like this. And just, I've got a bit of ink on the edge of the stamp. It shouldn't mark my card, but having created such a beautiful background, I don't want to mess it up. So, I'm going to lay this tree so that the base of the tree is just at the bottom of the card. Just like that. And then it's coming over giving a bit of a shade, not that there's any leaves on it, a bit of a shade to our wild hairs. Lovely. And then some of these gorgeous little dangly bits that come in the same set as that Tree of Courage. And I'm just going to, at random intervals, first, second generation, I'm just going to stamp those around the tree. I'm going to do one more because I don't want it to be too even. There we go. If you have an even number, your eye knows that there it's an even number and it tries to make sense of that. Whereas if it's an odd number, it goes, okay, that's a bit easier on the eyes altogether. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bit of a a well or a dale in which those hairs can sit there. So I'm just going to put some darker colour in and around where they might sit. 
for that I'm going to use my spiced marmalade and a bit of rusty hinge and I'm going to use my blending sponge just to create that. Sorry, my blending sponge and my stencil brush. And you'll see, first of all, I'll start with a stencil brush. Honestly, you cannot get this wrong. Don't think how far down is she doing it? Where is she doing it? Honestly, you'll see as I build this up, it doesn't matter. So you're just going to create a dark piece here, which is the dip in which they're sitting. Okay, just like that. Then I'm going to go in a bit with Rusty Hinge. And again, Rusty Hinge is slightly darker. And yes, you could just use one colour, but I always find that if you're doing two colours, it just gives a depth that you can't achieve with one. And it's always better to do two layers rather than going too heavy with one. You go in lightly with two. Voila. We can always come back later. So now we're going to take our little hairs. And I just chose two that were looking facing each other with the nocturne and I'm just going to pop them in the middle of the little dip that we've created. Just facing each other like that. I'm going to create the wild vine stamping on the side. For that, I'm using medieval blue and I'm going to orient the stamp in different ways to just come around the side of the card. Just cleaning off my mat for you there and always cleaning my stamps I will just use water onto the stamp and then I tea towel to wipe it clean I'll always work with a tea towel on my lap that way I know exactly where my cloth is put my inky fingers on it my gluey fingers clean my stamps I use one side for the glue gluey part of my fingers and the other side for cleaning my stamps. So there we have it. Now I'm going to give that a blast with a heat gun because I am going to go hard in when I blend the edges and I just want to make sure that I don't get too many smudges. So now we're going to come back and we're going to put some of the little foliage in and around the base of where our little hairs are sitting. I've just torn randomly and you can see very randomly a piece of copy paper here yes I'll be used that for my blending last time and I'm just gonna stamp with my purple delight versafine Claire I'm gonna stamp in and around the base using my piece of copy paper as a bit of a mask and for some of these, I'm going to let them just peek the top of the paper. And for the others, I'm going to give it a bit of height. So I'm just going to go around and do that all around the base of this card. In between the wild vines, just adding a bit of interest 
and continuity through the whole piece. So there we have our little um, well in which they're sitting. Then I'm going to come in with my white paint. Now you can use any acrylic white paint for this. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit on my mat. And I'm going to water it down. So that well, mine's a bit thick here. Now I put too much water in it. Let's see how we go with that one. And a very fine paintbrush here. That is too. I've put too much water in there. just want the right consistency for you. You need it so that it's thin enough to run but not so thin that when you pop it on it's um, it's not going to show up. So if you just see what I'm doing, dab, 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 like this, it just creates a bit of lightness in and around the base of the tree. In and through the wild vines. And then at the base and in between our lovely little mini foliage here, our little flowers popping up through the ground. So I'm not painting it, I'm literally just pouncing it on the page. So these sort of, my idea with this was that they look a bit like tiny little white flowers in and around the little dale that these hairs are sitting in. Also, in and around that join line between the purple and the yellow um, that we put on at the beginning. Not necessarily to just disguise it, but just to make it look as though it's all one piece coming through. I'm happy with that. Now, you can either use a Posca pen or the residue of your white paint here. And I'm just to create some splatters. And as I said in the beginning, it's not it's not necessarily to look like snow, but I just want that creates a bit of a magical feel and look. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just putting my stamps back over them so that I don't get white splatters over it. There we have it. And now I'm going to do some blending to bring the whole piece together. I'm going to clean this up and I'll be back with you in two ticks. So there we have it. It's now all dry. I've cleaned up my mat and now I'm going to create the shading around it to bring our whole piece together. For that, I'm going to use Seedless Preserve around the top part and then Spice Marmalade around the bottom with my blending sponges. I'm going to bring in a piece of paper 
so that I can take the excess off before I start. I've also got a piece of acetate, which I'm going to put over my work so that if I get any ink on my fingers, I'm not transferring it over onto my design. As I said before, it's much better that if you go in lighter and then you can add more colour, more depth further on, then if you go in too dark, it's much harder to take it off. So I'm starting on the edge of the card and bringing it all the way in. So you can see there, that's already created a completely different look to how it was before. Now I'm just going to go around the whole edge of the card. And there we have, it's drawn the whole thing together so that now what you're focusing on is these two gorgeous little hairs. And you may, for those of you who have been following me for a little while, you may wonder why we have no music. Well, there's a crazy set of rules now around music and even though I used copyright and royalty free music, oh my goodness. So I did think, well, maybe I'll sing to you, but then I thought perhaps you don't want that. So. We'll just have silence while I blend. <laughs> I'm going to just now go around the edge with black soot. Just again to create a bit of extra framing around this card. So you can see with my Sealess Preserve, I created quite a wide border there. But this one just a small smidgen of a border to create that frame and I'm going to do it this black soot all the way around the whole card them. So let me tidy this up so that you can see it. And then what I did with this card is as I just put it with a quite a wide border as I said in the beginning. That's about half an inch border. Half inch border which is about one and a half centimeters there. Now on the original, I put a bit of hills in the background. They're very faint, but I don't think they need it on this one. The only thing I've got left to do is put some water splatters around the paint, the ink that I've just blended there. And you'll see how that creates another layer of texture. So I'm just using my fan brush here. And spritz it with water. And I'm just doing it around the top, the seedless preserve piece. There. And I'm going to use a piece of my towel. You can use co um, kitchen towel if you like. And just blot it. I'm not rubbing it, just blotting it like that, which will bleach out some of the colour. 
So there we have our two gorgeous little wild hares set amongst this meadow. And I hope you enjoyed that. I'd love to see your make, so please tag me. It's so much fun. Thanks so much for being here and I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.